The tournament grounds were blissfully unaware of the history that Kakarot and Vegeta had had prior to them winding up on Earth. To them, this was a very fascinating looking matchup with two beings that had shown very clearly to all concerned that they meant business. Ooh, this was going to be a good fight, they thought. Kakarot was a veteran of the Budokai competitions, and this blonde fellow, whoever he was, looked equally menacing. Ooh, the pundits were having a great time. Nobody could place where the M on his forehead was from, but social media, whoever had a big enough Zoom to actually check, were abuzz with theories about what it could possibly mean. Unless, of course, it's just an M. I mean, you would be curious if you'd never seen it before, right? But we Dragon Ball fans, we've seen it too many times. Nevertheless, though, Kakarot and Vegeta stared each other down, especially after the latter had made his opening Saiyan statement by blocking the former's opening attack like it were nothing. Kakarot was still processing the news that his guardian, Mota, this is the beak fellow who's in charge of the Mediani Galactic days, had been seemingly killed in cold blood by this monster from his past once this supposed Barbadi had actually released him from his confines. How he had escaped, he did not really give a rat's bottom at the moment. What do you hope to gain from all this, Vegeta? said Kakarot calmly. All you're doing is allowing a lesser being to control you. That's not the Vegeta I remember. He would have never allowed anyone to be their puppet master. Vegeta chuckled quietly. I lost that freedom the moment you and your moronic kin sold me down the river. All I had left were my fists. They did the talking for me. They got noticed. And that was the only thing that kept me going in there. Where did all that Saiyan pride get me in the end, hmm? Nowhere. This isn't about that anymore, Kakarot. This is merely a means to an end. Your end. Kakarot took that very seriously. This wasn't bravado. Vegeta had been well and truly broken. Kami, thanks to his Namekian hearing, was responding to Raditz's constant badgering and requests as to know what these two were talking about from the other end of the arena. Eventually, he had just started repeating what was being said on the battlefield instead of being asked constantly, and Raditz was very much circumspect. It seemed like their idea of selling Vegeta to the fighting pit, that had been a funny idea at the time, a really kind of sort of a good example of karmic justice, and it was a bit of a yucky end to an otherwise sober arc, but all that had done was allow him to fester, seed, ruminate about his failures. It would have been better, now that you thought about it, if they just ended his life there and then, when they had the chance. It would have certainly been a little bit more dignified for the prince. What was becoming clear for the Saiyan brothers right now was that an encaged Vegeta was probably the most dangerous kind of Vegeta in existence. He'd resorted to magical assistance for his freedom, and neither of them could comprehend what this Barbadi was capable of at the moment, but what they could comprehend was that Vegeta's power had been greatly amplified, enhanced, on par with what they had. And his tenacity was terrifying. The fight between Kakarot and Vegeta was intense. The former doing his best to contain the energy blasts to the ring and not harming the crowd. It didn't help that they were not getting the hint that maybe, just maybe, it might be a little bit wise to maybe get out of there before they got hurt, but no, they paid to watch a fight and they were damn well going to be watching a fight. Meanwhile, Kiaro and Bulla, who had been witnessing this too, Kiaro being the son of Kakarot and Chichi, spotted a weird energy skulking around the arena. Bulla then pointed out over to a very big and scary looking man in black spandex, veins protruding from the top of this shaven skull. He was focused on the fight and holding something, somewhat discreetly, a device. It had a very faint yellow glow to the tip of it, but that was unmistakably key at the tip of that thing. Without trying to draw attention, the pair walked over to Shin and bowed profusely. Master Shin, sire? Your Excellency? Mm hmm, said Shin. Oh, please, no need for the honorifics, children. Call me Shin, Kibito scowled and grunted, 
not liking the idea of mortals calling his master by his name, but Shin ignored that. Over there, Bullock quietly pointed to the figure, who was staring at the fight, too busy watching to notice him. Shin's eyes widened. Of course, the other minion of Babidi. He's using this fight to fuel the egg containing Majin Buu with that contraption. With the power on display, they'll succeed in no time, Kibito responded. What shall we do, sire? None of us are powerful enough to engage with that other pest before a certain Saiyan patted Kibito on the back. What am I then? Chopped space liver? Raditz cracked his knuckles, Shin desperately telling him to be quiet. Oh, I'd be more than happy to put that nuke in his place. Thanks, kids. You've got a good eye. Kiara nodded. No problem, Uncle Raditz. Just be careful. Oh, don't worry, I've got this. Willow gave her father a knowing look. No theatrics, Papa. Just grab the device and run. Yeah, 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 yeah. Upon arrival, the being known as Spopovich was too busy holding the device tightly to his chest to notice the big Saiyan approaching him. Sure, he had been buffed up in terms of power just for the sake of doing what he did, but in terms of knowing energy and how it could be suppressed, ah, nope, and all of that worked. He then thought about the best way to take the device away from this miscreant, but, but nothing really came to mind at that moment without causing damage to himself and other people. The only other option was crude, but and then proceeded to sneak up right behind Spopovich, grabbed his legs and shot right up into the air, away from the stadium as fast as he could fly. Whoa! Shouted a very confused Spopovich as his hands were flailing about in the air, taken by surprise. In said surprise, he dropped the device, which clattered to the ground, and Vegeta felt a twitch as it did so and then looked to the spot where Spopovich had been just a few seconds ago. He cursed, damn it, where did that move go? But then Kakarot seized the moment and sucker punched Vegeta down into the arena, causing a five foot crater within. Kakarot wasn't sure what was going on to cause Vegeta to be distracted for a moment, but hey, he would take every chance he could get. Shin then instantly moved to the site of the device and retrieved it before returning to the spot where they were standing absolutely transfixed at the instantaneous movement. Bulla was shocked. Uh, how did you do- Oh, that? It's how we got here. Us Kais can do it, no problem. I believe a group of people called the Yardratians can do something similar. What should we do with this device, sire? Destroy it? Shin looked at it and fired his brow, before then shooting an eye beam into its core, and it exploded in its hands. This probably won't remove the energy already collected, but it'll make it a lot harder for Bobbity to do so, that's for sure. He's a wily old wizard. He'll have other ways of collecting energy. He then looked up to where the shrinking sight of Raditz and Spopovich were in the sky. Vegeta, though, was getting angrier and angrier. He wanted to end Kakarot there and then, but he had to go help his ally, especially since the device had been destroyed. It was going to get a lot harder to do what he was supposed to do and he could feel the energy transmission being cut. Without another word, he exploded out of the crater and flew away from the tournament grounds, sending multiple key blasts back in Kakarot's direction, without any care for people there attempting to impede Kakarot from following, which did work somewhat. Shin and Kabito took off and Kiara and Buller attempted to follow, but they were thwarted by something else holding them back. Was it their parents trying to keep them out of danger? They tried to fly harder, but the grip wasn't weakening. That was odd. When did Bulma and Chi Chi get stronger? They turned around and spotted a woman, not their mothers, who looked vaguely similar in skin tone and vein coverage as that other guy who Raditz had plucked up into the air. But this one had more hair, white blonde hair, and desaturated green eyes. You ain't going nowhere. Bulma, from a distance, was shocked. Uh, uh. Launch! In the depths of the evil wizard Barbadi's ship, the mage could see everything from upon his viewing globe. He wasn't perturbed though by the loss of the energy device, so what? Shin was right. There would be other means of collecting energy, this just so happened to be the simplest one. Master Barbadi, you are right to acquire a third, spoke a tall and imposing devil-like monster. This one had immense negative energy about them, 
concerning the likes of the strongest beings on the planet. All that spite and resentment fueled it well despite its lack of base strength. However, this should be enough of a distraction to keep any further interlopers from the falling off path. Arbery sinisterly turned his attention to the situation regarding the other mook. Deborah, why don't you go greet our mm, frisky fellow? I will admit that this means that distraction is somewhat unorthodox. Put him in his place, though. Deborah was a little confused at this instruction. Wouldn't Vegeta be sufficient for this task, Master Bobbity? I would hardly imagine he would need help. I am aware, but you are more level-headed than he. See to it that he keeps to the program. He's a tricky one to pin down, as you should know. Deborah sighed, but ultimately bowed. With pleasure, Master Bobbity. I shall see to him at once. With that, Deborah exited the chamber, and the Potato Mage looked back to his viewing globe. Not bad, Saiyan, but you will rule the day you try to vex the great Bobbity. In the midst of all of this, Kakarot had been left out of the loop, since he was so fixated on fighting Vegeta. When things had calmed down a little bit, he then looked down to what was going on below, and spotted somebody holding back his son and niece. Hey! Let them go! He said before rushing to the scene. As that was going on, Kakarot had been declared the winner of that round, but he didn't care this time around. Forget the tournament, someone was attacking his kids. He tackled the possessed launch and slammed her into the wall of the arena. The people near the impact zone were absolutely startled, shocked at the fact that the fight was coming to them, and the tremors that were emanating from the spot. And when Kakarot gazed at the person it was, he was surprised, just as much as Bomber had been. L launch Launch coughed up blood. Even that looked pale by comparison to what it should be. Well done, Einstein. You remember my name. Now let me go. I ain't done nothing to you. That may be, but you stay away from my family. Why are you even here? And how did you get this strong? Launch chose to ignore that question and continued to resist. Back in the cave, Barbadine then noticed the Saiyan known as Kakarot having seized the minion, and he grimaced. I forgot about that one. Looks like Vegeta failed to finish him off then. Oh well. Looks like I'm going to have to do all the work for him and burst this one's bubble. With a sudden, silent incantation, a widening of his eyes, Launch let out a massive shriek of pain as the veins on her head throbbed harder than ever. Kami, who was sensitive to such arts, somewhat, felt the surge of magical energy in the area. He rushed over to the spot where Launch and Kakarot were. Launch was pulsating and beginning to swell. Her head and body were slowly becoming more and more disfigured as Barbadie was attempting to turn her into an effective, explosive bomb, trying to dispatch Kakarot and anyone else. She was crying out in pain, Kakarot unsure what to do. Kakarot! shouted Kami. Stand back! I will try to hold her demise! Kami? Why? I am the guardian of this planet. I will protect its people, especially those who have been usurped by darkness. I must do my best. Kami tried his best, as he said, to use whatever power he had to break the connection that was causing Launch's suffering. Barbadie could sense the intrusion and laughed. Foolish Namekian, you seriously think your feeble powers can hold mine? He upped the ante, Launch shrieking even harder as the process continued. No, accelerated her becoming an almost unrecognizable mass of a human being or what was once one. Kakarot was having to think on the spot. What was he going to do? Let Kami try and save her? Or get her away from the arena where other innocent people could be hurt or killed? He was torn and left frantically looking at Kami. Old man, come on! Hurry! I'm trying, Kakarot, but this power, it's, it's too much. I can't... Ugh. A puff of sparks caught Kami by surprise, and he fell to the ground. The connection terminated, and the swelling increased for Launch, her eyes bulging. Kakarot had no choice. He powered up to Super Saiyan 2, grabbing Launch, and flew as high as he could with her. I'm sorry! I'm so sorry! He shouted in the rushing air to Launch, who was crying and wailing in agony. Kill me! Kill me! Not damn it! shouted Kakarot, who had no idea what was going on and why Launch was having this happening to her. Barbadie saw the sight from the globe and flexed his eyes. Goodbye, Saiyan. With one last gross spurt, the pair were hovering in the air. Launch then muttered, Oh, Reddit, 
And then she exploded. Kakort overwhelmed by the blast. Radid stopped in midair, sensing his brother in trouble. But before he could figure out what to do next, with the dangling Spopovich in his hand, who had fallen unconscious through all of the violent buffeting and forces of rapid air, he then had to have his mind made up for him. Good day, Sian, said a very deep-voiced devil. If you would be so kind as to drop the scum in your grasp, I would be most grateful. You need not concern yourself with them anymore. I will be your concern instead. Radid spotted the M on his forehead and started to piece things. You! You're another one of Barbadi's grunts? Barbadi Deborah chuckled. I would hardly call myself a grunt. More like a king. Well, King Grunt, either get on with it or leave me alone. As you insist, said Deborah. And he proceeded to rush him, as requested. And that's where we're going to be leaving things for right now.